Greetings everyone! This is a quick promo before the video begins. If you're new to the channel and you didn't know it yet, I am actually an author in addition to being a YouTuber, and I have two books that you can get on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1 and The Occult Mafia. The first is sort of a bizarre, absurdist kaiju anime mashup, and the other is a horror noir story with a hint of a western thrown in there. They're both set in the same universe, and at this point I've received mostly positive reviews, so you might want to check them out. I've provided Amazon links for both of them down in the description. They're both available in either paperback or Amazon Kindle, and Operation Red Dragon is also available in audiobook form. So if either of these strike your fancy and you want to support a struggling artist, feel free to go down and check out either one or both of them. Alright, the shameless self-promotion is out of the way, we can get on with the video. Thank you all for your support. Let's go back in time for a moment. It's 1999, a year when Cartoon Network still plays older works from Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera alongside their new original content. June is approaching, and the channel is preparing for its annual Looney Tunes marathon appropriately entitled June Bugs. Up to this point, the classic shorts have run on the channel more or less unaltered, so it comes as a surprise to everyone when the network announces that, effective immediately, cartoons featuring Speedy Gonzales will no longer be shown. They will in fact be indefinitely shelved. The reason behind this decision, as conveyed by spokeswoman Lori Goldberg, is, of course, political correctness. Speedy's cartoons have been deemed offensive to the Hispanic people, purveying ethnic stereotypes which are no longer acceptable by modern standards. Hence, his works are effectively censored so as to get with the times. This sparks immediate backlash not only from fans, but from, of all places, the League of United Latin American Citizens. This special interest group which champions the rights of Hispanic Americans loudly proclaims the censorship of Speedy Gonzales to be a bad move on Cartoon Network's part. As League representatives put it, Speedy is favored by Hispanics as one of their best representatives in pop culture, for he is a heroic, noble figure who serves as a role model for the audience. Many people wind up taking the League side on this debate, for the narrative of Speedy being offensive and reinforcing stereotypes doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Save for one notable exception. It is undeniable that the very first cartoon to feature the fastest mouse in all Mexico, Cat Tales for Two, depicts him as the embodiment of multiple negative stereotypes. And had this been the version of Speedy who stuck around, a viable case could be made for him being an outdated hate crime. However, this Speedy is not the Speedy who went on to become a beloved mainstay of the Looney Tunes roster. Rather, this Speedy did. Does he embody any negative stereotypes? Well, let's break it down. One of the best-known stereotypes about Mexicans is that they are slow and lazy, often to the point of lethargy. Obviously, we can scratch that one off the list right away. As his name and title make perfectly clear, Speedy's defining trait is his incredible speed and energy, which doesn't fit the stereotype at all. If anything, Speedy openly defies it. Another common stereotype is to portray Mexicans as mentally slow, or more precisely as idiots, though this is a common stereotype for many races and ethnicities. Again, we can strike that one out completely because Speedy is known for having a very sharp mind. He doesn't just outrun his opponents, he outwits them as well. Yet another stereotype we commonly see applied to Mexicans is lechery. This specifically applies to Mexican men, who it is said will force themselves on women to satisfy their lust. Again, that's the stereotype, not a statement of fact. Now, there are implications in several cartoons that Speedy is a mouse with many lovers throughout Central America, so does that mean we've finally struck offensive gold? Not so fast. The stereotype is specifically about lechery, implying perverse deviance and a lack of consent on the woman's part. Neither of those apply to the fastest mouse in all Mexico. Whenever we see Speedy interacting with the opposite sex, he is nothing but cordial and charming, and it's always obvious that the women he woos want to be in his company. Speedy is a hero, after all, and heroic men are usually viewed as attractive by women. The precise ethics of having a lover in every port is certainly open for discussion, but we're talking about lechery specifically, and that's not on display here. Ergo, we can rule that out as well. Unless you're the kind of person who sees any interaction between a man and a woman as sexual assault, but that's an extreme I don't think is worth entertaining. What about his accent? Speedy's Mexican accent is an exaggeration that doesn't sound authentic when compared to the real thing. 
That counts as stereotyping, right? Well, it could, if it were an isolated case. At this point, we have to remember that Speedy Gonzales is a cartoon character, and cartoons are most often characterized by how they exaggerate for comedic effect. It's true that Speedy's accent is exaggerated, nobody is saying otherwise. But so are the accents of such characters as Foghorn Leghorn, Pepe Le Pew, and Bugs Bunny, to name but a few. Audiences understand the reason for exaggerating their accents, and thus they are not offended by it. Why then should Speedy be made an exception? Remember, the League of United Latin American Citizens is campaigning at this point to bring Speedy back, so these Latin American peoples clearly have no problem with the way he talks. Why then should anyone else? The last attempt you can possibly make to prove that Speedy is a stereotype is his name. Well-known cultural critic William Nariccio once speculated that the name Speedy Gonzales is derived from a dirty joke about a lecherous Mexican man known for, let us say, being quick to finish. The thing is, this connection is pure speculation with no hard evidence to support it, nor is there any proof that the name was applied to the mouse maliciously in the first place. No matter how you slice it, Speedy Gonzales is not a negative stereotype. In fact, he's the polar opposite of a negative stereotype. Again, barring that initial appearance of proto-Speedy, he's consistently depicted as a noble, heroic figure who uses his unique abilities and sharp mind to outwit his opponents, essentially making him a superhero. I mean, why not count him as such? He has a superpower, an iconic costume, and an inborn drive to help people. I would say he qualifies. Can the stereotypes be applied elsewhere in these cartoons? Well, the slow and lethargic one could be applied to Speedy's rarely seen cousin Slowpoke Rodriguez, but that can just as easily be seen as a creative choice to make him Speedy's opposite, his slowness meant to make Speedy's task just a little bit trickier. The mouse villagers who often rely on Speedy's help can potentially be seen as embodying certain stereotypes about partying, drinking, and occasional laziness. On the other hand, whenever they appear, they are portrayed in a sympathetic light. Usually they are being unfairly oppressed by someone they can't fight back against on their own, hence why Speedy intervenes on their behalf. And who are the oppressors, you ask? Most commonly, it's either Sylvester the Cat or Daffy Duck, two characters whose shared lack of Hispanic accents imply American heritage. Now, Sylvester's harassment of the mice makes a certain degree of sense because he's a cat, making him their natural enemy. Daffy, on the other hand, menaces the mice purely for the heck of it, in some instances acting as a sadistic slave driver. So even when we do acknowledge a few stereotypical traits among the mice, which again is likely for harmless comedic effect because these are cartoons, the shorts consistently remain on their side, and the audience is meant to cheer when their oppressors are defeated. The deeper you look into things, the more baffling the racist accusation becomes. And on the off chance that you think anything I've said up to this point is rationalizing, the hypocrisy behind Cartoon Network's decision speaks for itself. You see, when Speedy's cartoons are taken out of syndication, they only stop airing in the United States, but they remain on the regular schedule for Cartoon Network Latin America, the channel's variant that runs in Mexico. But wait a minute, I thought Speedy Gonzalez was offensive to the Mexican people. If that's really the case, why would his cartoon still be running in Mexico? Shouldn't that have been the first place they were stricken from? Could it be because the Mexican people actually love Speedy and are not offended by him? If you can't answer that question on your own by now, you probably weren't paying attention. In short, this was a misguided attempt by people who did not want to be seen as racist that backfired and made them look racist anyway. By 2002, Speedy Gonzales cartoons are back in syndication on Cartoon Network, and the character would even get an entire disc devoted to him on the fourth volume of the Looney Tunes Golden Collection. Speedy was reinstated as the cultural icon he deserves to be, and everyone who followed the story came away from it with a new understanding of how counterproductive political correctness is. Oh sure, you may stand up and loudly proclaim that you speak for a disenfranchised people as justification for removing classic art and entertainment from the public eye, but in the end, all you've probably done is censor something that didn't need to be censored in the first place. So why am I bringing this story up now? Oh, no reason. No reason at all. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe, then go down to the description to find links to follow us on DeviantArt, Patreon, and Twitter. 
While you're there, you'll also find the Amazon links for the original novels Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, and The Occult Mafia. Two books I think you'll really enjoy. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.